Okay, uh, FizzGiz customers. Most of you are familiar with this, my, my basic FizzGiz cap. And um, you know how it works. You can place it on a soda bottle, like this one. Okay. And you can pressurize that soda bottle if you have liquid in it and you're pressurizing as I am here with carbon dioxide then you can fully carbonate uh, any beverage that has gone flat or a new first time beverage which we're going to do in just a moment okay okay you can see how that works now that's the uh, typical construct that most of you have seen let me show you something new and something different. Here's another FizzGiz cap. This FizzGiz cap is equipped with a whipped cream dispenser on top. Many of you have seen these on whipped cream cans. You press this to the side to open them. So I have a bottle and this bottle is a little bit different. Instead of a FizzGiz plug valve in the cap, I've placed a FizzGiz plug valve in the bottom of the bottle. You can see it there. So. Let me show you how this works. Now this cap is a new cap. It has a tamper ring. So when you put it on for the first time and you tighten it up and you open it, it leaves the tamper ring attached to the bottle. You see that? And the tamper ring's off the cap and it's on the bottle. So let's show you how this one works when you pressurize it. I have an extra long FizzGiz plug valve in here. Works much in the same way, you just put the gas in in the bottom of the bottle, as opposed to the top. Okay, and now, hard as a rock, okay? So, what does that do for us? What can we do? Well, there's a lot of things you can do. If you're pressurizing with nitrous oxide, you can make some really nice homemade whipped cream in a bottle like this. And remember, these bottles, uh, you know, are virtually free. Uh, for the taking anybody can get them. Let me put some cold water in this bottle. I'm not gonna Put a lot. I'm just gonna put enough to uh, do my uh, demo here <clears throat> So let's carbonate this I think I'll bleed off some of the headspace because it had air in there. So I'd like to get rid of that. Pretty much just get the uh, pure CO2 headspace. I think I'll open it. Okay, so there we go. I'm sure it's purged out all the air. And it's simply full of carbon dioxide at this point. So, we all know how this works. Carbon dioxide is like sugar. It does not mix without a little bit of stirring. Eh, you know, you can give it 24 or 48 hours if you have a pitcher of tea and you just pour a cup of sugar in the bottom of it and you stick it in the fridge and eventually it'll dissolve. You know, 24 to 48 hours. But uh, face it, uh, most people don't want to wait that long. When they make a drink, they're ready. they're ready for it. All right, so put a little more just to top it off, but fairly well carbonated. You can see when the bubbles slow down to just a trickle, the bottle is pretty much fully pressurized, and the pressure coming out the tip of the nozzle is just barely higher than the pressure that's already in the bottle. Okay, so uh, I don't know, why don't we try this? So that's that. Yeah, so, um, you know, we've got ourselves uh, some carbonated uh, water there. And um, I think that uh, the, uh, the construct of placing a whipped cream can valve on top of the bottle 
and a Fizgiz plug valve in the bottom is uh, pretty useful for many of you who um, who want to make something experiment different. You can put eggs in here and make carbonated eggs, make the world's fluffiest and lightest omelets and scrambled egg dishes. You can put whipped cream with some sugar and some vanilla flavoring or other flavorings and uh, uh, make uh, really nice very, very tasty homemade whipped cream. So I'm sure you can come up with other things to do. Um, I won't get into it. A lot of people like carbonating coffee. A lot of people like uh, infusing coffee with um, uh, uh, nitrogen to uh, uh, make, uh, like for example, uh, homemade cold brew nitro coffee. And uh, so yeah, let your imagination uh, run wild. Thanks for watching.